Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Camilla Ancona. I teach the technology, innovation, and management from the University of Naples, Federico II. So um, let me say two words about our institution. So University of Naples, uh, Federico II is the oldest public uh, university in the world and the biggest research center in Southern Italy. Uh, it is uh, in top research university and our department of electrical engineer and uh, information technology has been awarded as an excellence for a decade now. And our mission at the university is, is built around three main pillars that are teaching, researching, and uh, um, transferring technological and uh, the, um, uh, knowledge uh, and um, knowledge about technology. So the department, our department uh, is, uh, has a lot of collaboration, interesting collaboration with the teaching hospital of Federico II uh, that includes uh, several top tier centers for cancer patients, uh, as well as um, um, some collaboration on e-learning platforms and uh, partnership with IT companies uh, and uh, um, also an interesting uh, partnership with uh, the, um, the Apple Academy for uh, developing uh, app design. So, um, um, to motivate our uh, activity in the project uh, on uh, the systematic literature review on um, digital uh, tools to support the, um, the life of cancer patients and their caregivers, uh, here, here are some numbers of cancer in the um, European Union. So this map shows the estimated incidence rate in European countries uh, in 2022 uh, per uh, 100,000 uh, habitants. And we can see in color from a lighter to darker colors that uh, the incidence uh, ranges uh, differs a lot uh, among countries. And uh, the, the countries that are most, uh, mostly impacted uh, by this illness are France, uh, Ireland, um, also Greece, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Netherlands. Uh, then uh, we have um, Italy, uh, Portugal, and uh, Germany, and the other ones. So um, basically, uh, fortunately, the, um, the estimated cancer incidence trends uh, is constant. However, uh, due to uh, the um, uh, increment, demographic uh, increment of the population of the uh, uh, European Union, there will be uh, a relative change of 18% uh, of um, incidence in, um, uh, in cancer patients in the, um, the next uh, 20 years. So, Mm, if we uh, investigate uh, on uh, the most common ca cancer types in Europe, we can see uh, on the left, uh, the, um, for the males, uh, we have that uh, uh, countries uh, divide uh, themselves in a half. Basically, one half, the Western Europe, um, in, in the Western Europe, the most uh, uh, common cancer is uh, the prostate cancer, uh, whereas in the East, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, uh, the lung cancer is the most common, um, li uh, most likely due to the fact that uh, there is uh, um, uh, the habit of smoking in uh, such uh, countries. And uh, also in uh, Greece, there is a lot of, um, of people that uh, smoke. Uh, around 35% uh, of the population, the male population. Uh, whereas uh, for all countries in Europe, the most common cancer type is uh, breast cancer um, among females. So, uh, but 
there are also good news because uh, the survival rate uh, um, in uh, five years uh, in adults uh, is uh, increasing and this trend uh, is, um, is positive uh, uh, in the last uh, 30 years in all the uh, European countries, uh, even though it ranges, uh, um, it differs uh, by cancer type, and this uh, we can see prostate, lung, and uh, breast cancer. Uh, it is always increasing, but and it is always uh, related to the GDP. So in uh, in countries where we have a higher G a GDP we have also a higher survival rate and vice versa. Uh, and breast cancer is the one that uh, has the, the highest survival rate uh, ranging uh, with the 16 uh, uh, countries that um, uh, share a survival rate of 85 uh, uh, to uh, 90 percentage of uh, survival. So this motivates uh, our activity uh, because uh, the number of people diagnosed with can the cancer in Europe uh, will rise due to demogra demographic uh, increment, uh, as well as number of survivors. So there is the need to improve uh, cancer care and accel accelerate the treatment times. How? And uh, we uh, want to... Um, um, focus on healthcare that is uh, uh, patient centered and uh, involves uh, um, the patients, uh, and uh, it is also um, could be also uh, capable of uh, uh, monitoring uh, data after treatment in order to uh, confirm the benefits uh, of treatment over time. Uh, so uh, our uh, main activity during this project has been uh, uh, leading a systematic literature review um, that is basically an overview of the existing uh, digital initiative um, for, uh, um, uh, among scientific publication. Basically, we want to assess the state of art of uh, e health non-clinical support literature for cancer patients and also uh, identify the main gaps in the literature uh, on the support of uh, such patients. Um, why digital technology? Uh, we uh, thought that uh, e-health uh, tools can support uh, patient engagement, that uh, we uh, saw that is uh, a key feature in the, the improvement of patient uh, health care. Yelp offers the opportunity to transition from uh, a reactive to a proactive approach uh, and also to a continuous monitoring and um, um, also to enable the uh, patient to be the protagonist of this care. Uh, the digital tool for cancer patient uh, can uh, vary among uh, different categories. Uh, we can have uh, um, mobile apps, uh, websites, uh, um, wearables device uh, and also telemedicine and uh, <coughs> the main goals of uh, such tools are uh, supporting the chronic uh, disease uh, to um, manage some uh, psychological uh, issues as well as uh, uh, some side effect symptoms of uh, the cancer treatment and also uh, some uh, uh, daily life uh, necessities like appointment management. So to perform this systematic literature review, there are a lot of steps. And um, uh, first of all, we need to formulate the problem and develop uh, a review protocol. So um, we define the research questions and we want to answer this question. So basically, uh, we want to investigate if uh, EL solution has been equally proposed and investigated across all cancer type and uh, uh, European Union countries. And if not, which types of cancer have uh, seen more EL initiatives and why? Uh, which are the most effective uh, EL uh, solutions? And uh, among them, uh, what is the adherence rate? 
and if found to be low, as we expect, why? And finally, uh, what key areas do a yield solution target to um, uh, enhance the quality of life for cancer patients? So basically, we define the protocol um, following uh, um, a framework that is called uh, PICO. It is, uh, that stands for uh, Population, Intervention, Comparison, and Outcome. And in our case, uh, population uh, are individuals um, living in the European Union uh, countries that uh, have been diagnosed by uh, cancer of any type in any stage of treatment. The intervention uh, is um, EL tools um, with respect um, the EL tools effectiveness with respect to uh, traditional healthcare. And the outcome uh, is uh, their effective, uh, effectiveness in supporting and improving the quality of life of the patients and their, and their informal caregivers. So the protocols have been developed and uh, has been registered uh, in the International Prospective Register of Systematic Reviews. And uh, then we, um, we started our research so basically, uh, we defined uh, a query to um, um, uh, question some databases, uh, and then we defined some filtering criteria uh, to extract the data and summarizing, summarize it. So uh, basically, we defined uh, um, three uh, main family of keywords. The first one is in the center and uh, um, identify the, um, the object of the, the research that is a cancer patient or oncological patient. And then uh, uh, at least one word of the left and the right panel must be uh, included. The left panel is about uh, our words about uh, uh, the support of the quality of life for caring for the patients and the other one is uh, about uh, digital tools. Um, so uh, then we uh, selected the three of the main databases in the, um, among the uh, scientific publication uh, that, is, that are Scopus, PubMed, and Embase, and we selected uh, a total of uh, uh, about uh, 700 uh, articles. Then we define some inclusion and exclusion criteria. So we basically um, included only primary studies, um, excluding some uh, reviews, protocols, opinion paper, etc. that uh, um, have been written in English uh, in the last decade. Uh, then we uh, filtered the, the uh, uh, these articles, uh, uh, reading the abstract, uh, selecting uh, only the ones that, are, uh, that um, were proposing non-clinical EL solutions. And finally, um, reading the full text of the articles, uh, we ensure that uh, the articles were uh, about uh, European countries' patients and <clears throat> that uh, the full text was available. So basically, during this, um, uh, this filtering, uh, we started from uh, uh, 700 articles, and then uh, we included in the review uh, 54 articles. And uh, for these uh, articles that have been included uh, in, the, um, in the review, uh, we uh, assessed their quality uh, by means of a mixed method appraisal tool, uh, that is a standard uh, tools, uh, uh, tool of uh, systematic literature review that basically uh, categorize the articles in five categories that are qualitative, uh, um, quantitative randomized control trials, quantitative non-randomized control trials, quantitative descriptive and uh, mixed methods. And for each categ category, um, we uh, had to answer to five questions uh, in order to assess, uh, to give a score of uh, quality uh, to that, uh, to such uh, articles. Um, once uh, we have done that, uh, we extracted the data of our database and analyzed it. So basically, 
the trend in um, yield for cancer publication uh, is uh, positive because there is uh, um, uh, an interest uh, in uh, uh, researching about uh, uh, yield solution among uh, scientific publication. And, uh, but the number of publications uh, strongly uh, varies among uh, different uh, European countries. We uh, can see that the uh, Netherlands and, uh, uh, has the, uh, the highest number of publications also because it's the, um, the country uh, in Europe that is uh, mostly affected by this uh, illness. Um, then we have uh, Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, and unfortunately, uh, no uh, article uh, um, originating from Greece uh, have been uh, included uh, in, the, in the article, in the, in the review. So, um, to answer the first question um, of our um, research study, um, we found it that uh, this, uh, the included uh, article uh, uh, in that review uh, focuses uh, on uh, one half on uh, uh, multi-cancer type uh, studies and uh, on uh, about one third on uh, um, breast cancer. Uh, for two reasons, basically. Well, one, is, uh, one is that uh, survival rate in, in breast cancer is very high, so there is, uh, it's, it's easier to make some studies, some scientific study, and to uh, have some data on the follow-up. And, um, and uh, also because uh, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, um, interest and awareness among, uh, among uh, breast cancer uh, patients. Uh, then uh, we have uh, colorectal cancer and um, head and neck cancer and uh, all the other ones. Um, the number of participants uh, included uh, in the study uh, ranges, uh, varies a lot and it ranges from 2 to uh, 15,000 uh, number of participants uh, with uh, a median uh, number of participants on, on, of uh, uh, 130 uh, individuals. And this uh, um, tells us that uh, the, um, the results that uh, are included in uh, such um, study are uh, statistically uh, solid. Uh, regarding the types of article, included uh, in this review, uh, there is a strong uh, uh, prevalence of quantitative randomized control trials. Then we have um, some quantitative non-randomized studies uh, as well as uh, quantitative descriptive studies and only a few of qualitative study uh, and mixed method uh, studies, uh, which uh, was quite uh, surprising. Um, and uh, but the quality score uh, is uh, almost uh, uh, every time uh, over the two. Uh, that is the minimum to, uh, for an article to be included uh, in, the, in this type of re or review. So <clears throat> what we extracted uh, from the data of this uh, article uh, is that the main purposes of the existing digital tools uh, in uh, European countries are relieving uh, both physical and psychological side effects uh, to um, uh, remotely monitoring uh, vitals um, for checkups and follow-ups, uh, to simplify the checkups uh, procedure during treatments, uh, promote the screening uh, for cancer prevention and increase at uh, literacy. Uh, however, the tools proposed are mainly website and mobile apps. There uh, was only uh, one wearable device and um, no uh, e-learning um, uh, e uh, platforms. Um, then, uh, in order to cluster somehow the, the main themes emerging from the literature review, 
um, uh, we have shown that uh, basically all the articles included in, in the review um, show the comparison of usability uh, or adoption or effectiveness and uh, adherence of the health solution uh, with respect to the traditional uh, healthcare in all the in one or all the stages of the treatment uh, and then some uh, article um, also uh, focused on uh, comparing cost uh, among traditional healthcare and digital care or uh, increase empowerment uh, improving uh, physical health uh, uh, improving psychosocial uh, and lifestyle uh, issues uh, such as uh, in, um, anxiety depression etc and uh, very few uh, assessing and fostering health literacy um, so to sum up um, usability feasibility and satisfaction were high in all the study but adoption and adherence uh, are quite low. And uh, this is obviously uh, a problem. Um, also because the, uh, there is uh, the evidence uh, for positive effect of e health intervention. So when uh, any uh, digital tools have been adopted, then it shows to be uh, effective in reducing anxiety, depression, fatigue, insomnia, or to increase physical activity uh, post, uh, post care, post treatment, or to improve motivation and autonomy in patients. However, there, um, there are mixed uh, um, um, conclusions about um, health literacy and long-term long effect. Uh, because the, the results depends on the, the cancer type and also on the type of digital tools employed. So the challenge for e-health adoption uh, remains uh, engagement, engagement of patients association, clinician, doctors, uh, because they are generally skeptical towards uh, digital solution. For example, in Italy, it's <laughs> very true. Uh, and um, the, um, so there is the need to an additional educational um, uh, literacy for medical professionals uh, in order to uh, uh, not be uh, threatened by um, progress and change, but to um, uh, foster the introduction of digital technology uh, technologies in oncological care. Uh, another uh, surprising uh, result uh, emerging from this review that uh, uh, is that caregivers uh, are unsung heroes. Basically, there is uh, no, um, very little studies among uh, caregivers, their burden, um, how digital tools can reduce the burden of uh, informal caregivers. Uh, obviously, uh, um, fostering the uh, autonomy of the cancer patient uh, has an indirect uh, effect uh, to um, facilitate uh, the, the caregivers. However, there is uh, no um, work uh, that uh, specifically investigates uh, how to help such, um, such people. And uh, we can see also from the Eurocare Eurocare statistics that uh, um, there is still a problem in uh, uh, legal recognition, identification, and need assessment with uh, caregivers uh, among all uh, European countries, basically. So in conclusion, um, from literature reviews emerges that uh, there is a lot of potential uh, with the uh, health uh, um, uh, digital tools, as well as room for improvement. So we hope that uh, the dissemination activities of this project, of this, this European project, Health for Cancer, can boost the attention of all the stakeholders in, uh, involved uh, in uh, such uh, uh, issue uh, to fill the gaps in healthcare tool and to increase uh, awareness and digital progress. 
uh, in order to fight uh, uh, all together against cancer. Thank you. Thank you.